I want to share something with you. I was thinking about it, contemplating, shall I share, shall I not share? I think I'll share it with you guys because a lot of you guys kept coming every day. I had a dream the other day. After looking at the hadiths and Bulugh al Maram preparing it that night, I, I slept whilst on my sofa, whilst reading. I slept on the side and it was a long sleep. Normally I end up getting up quicker than others, other, other times. But I slept. And in my dream, what I saw was me telling my children to get ready. I was telling them, get up, prepare yourselves, we're going, we're going. And so my children said, Dad, where are we going? I said, we're going to meet the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Get up, everybody prepare yourself. And my children got ready, my son, my daughters, all of us. And we came out, it was like it was... What I can describe it to be, it was like it was Eid. Everyone's coming out of their house. When I came out, everyone else was coming out of their houses. We all go into a place, an open place. So we walked for a while until we came to an open place and like a park, an open land. But it wasn't grass, it was sand. Everyone is there. As we walked, we walked, we walked. There's a, there's a line for every party. There's one line on this side, which is on the right, and a line on the other side. The people on the, line, the left side are going faster than the ones on the right. So, sorry, before we came into the park or the land, there was a security told us, you go, you're not allowed to come into this place. And another group of people, they were told to come in. So I came, I said, Salaam Alaikum, and I was told to come in, and all my children, I came, they came in with me. So we went in. A lot of people were like, why can't we come in? I didn't hear what was said to them, but we went into the open land. Um, we, wa we walked, and as we're walking, we're on the right side. I have my children right around me, and I see an old man, not, not, not very old, but senior in age, but not old as in the sense he can't walk or anything but he has a walking stick and there's another man holding him from the arm like this and I asked someone, I said, who's that? because they just looked unique from everybody else and I was told the one who has the walking stick is Jabir ibn Abdullah and we all know Jabir became blind in his old age and I said, okay, who's the one holding him in his hand? so he's holding him by the hand and he has a pen and a little notebook on his hand. And he's asking a question. And so they're talking, talking, I can see they're mumbling something, but when they come by me, the question that I hear that they say to each other is, or the question that he says to Jabir, this man says to Jabir, is, who were the people who narrated hadith from you? But then remember, they're on the fast track. We're on this line where we're, we're moving slow. They're just going out fast before us. So I asked, who is the other man asking the question? I was told it's Sheikh Al-Albani Rahimahullah. In my head, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, I know why he's asking that question. Because there's a discussion in Ilm Al-Hadith whether Abu Zubair Al-Makki, Abu Zubair heard from Jabir. If he narrated from Jabir, if he's from the students who heard from Jabir. There's that discussion going on in the science of Hadith. So he calls him, whenever he gives the answer, he writes something down and they grabs him from the arm and they keep moving. And so at that moment, I, I was thinking, SubhanAllah, he still wants to know hadith. He still wants to know the rulings of the science of hadith. And they walk until they get to the front row before everybody else and the messenger standing there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The messenger didn't stand for anyone else. No one was privileged for the Prophet to stand for them. Everybody else, the Prophet they were kissing his head and they were shaking his hand and they would go. Keep, pay attention here. The Prophet ﷺ, when Jabir and Albani came, he stood up. And then the messenger grabbed Albani on the left side of his hand and the right hand side, he grabbed Jabir. And he brought them close to each other and in the middle of their heads, in the middle, the messenger whispered something and he looked at both of them and they smiled and the Prophet smiled. And then both of them went towards the, where the Prophet is facing, in front of him. There's a lot of people sitting there, a lot of people. So, 
we get to the Prophet Sallallahu I shake his hand, I kiss him, I said, Ya Rasulullah, Abdurrahman, these are my children, and the Prophet Sallallahu greets, and then I go. I don't go the direction of Jabir and Albani. I get told, listen, go to the back. So the people were divided into two. A group that were told to go, and they were going to the place where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, they can see the Prophet, they can vision him, he's in front of them. And another group of people were put behind. And so the ones who were going behind, there was a security telling them, go this way, go this way. And the ones that were going right, in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were told to go. So I asked, why can't I sit there? I want to see the Prophet. Why do I want to go behind the Prophet's back? And the thing that was said to me is, what did you do for the Prophet's religion? What have you, what, how have you served the deen of the Prophet Sallallahu These people that you see are the great scholars of hadith. Al-Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, Muslim ibn al-Hajjaj and Al-Imam uh, Abu Dawood and Ahmed ibn Hanbal and Ishaq. These are the people there. And Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and the people who gave their life they're everything to this religion that, that they work hard on it and you mashallah good muslim at least you got to see the prophet go behind now and so my son when we went into the uh behind the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we sat down my son said dad i i i, I want to go and see the prophet i want to i want to i want to vision him i want to see uh, why can't we go why why can't we go where everyone else but went and uh, I said to him, Dad, it's, it's based on actions today. It's not about uh, anything else. We didn't get it. But he said, Dad, you used to teach a lot. You used to do this. Why? And I said, I never served the religion like Sheikh Al-Bani and Al-Imam Al-Bukhari. And... No way. That's really what I can remember. I don't remember the, pro the rest vividly. The point I want to take from this story, Wallahi, um, is we have to take a role in, in this deen. Wallahi, we have to. We have to serve this deen, give our lives to it. If we want to be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to be people who lived by his life, served his religion, work hard every day of our life to just teach and educate and learn and study and really... These people, that's what they did. That's why they were honored. And they were, as the poet said, the people of Hadith are the Prophet's people. They're his companions. Even if they didn't accompany him in this world, they accompanied him by reading his Hadiths, reading his narrations. This is where they accompanied him. I really, that dream really affected me. I thought about it a lot and a lot and a lot. And I said, SubhanAllah, we can really, we haven't really done anything for this religion. Haven't. These ahadiths have to study deeply, have to learn them properly. That's why the Messenger said, I left two things for you the Quran and the Sunnah. Hold on to them, stick to them. And if you hold on to them, you will never be misguided after me. The book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, make us those who hold on to, hold on to the Quran and the sunnah with their molar teeth. We never let go of it.